Uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, if you remember in last class, we were discussing about the uh, fabrication or process flow for fabricating the uh, piezoresistive micro cantilever, right. And what we have seen, we have seen that uh, uh, for designing or fabricating such a sensor, such a cantilever, uh, we need to start with silicon on insulator that is called SOI wafer. Right. We also seen that how you can open the window, you can diffuse the P plus first, then uh, uh, you can diffuse P plus plus followed by the metal contact and followed by the front to back uh, alignment and then DRI. Right. So, if you see the screen, this is what we were talking about that uh, in the last uh, uh, module, we have seen this process flow in detail. Um, and then we have also seen that if we want to uh, understand the properties of the tissue. So, what happens is uh, when the tissue is out right, it is tissue is out this is uh, taken out uh, with a needle and this process is biopsy. So, it is called biopsy needle. Then this tissue is sliced into uh, the into uh, thin slices with a technique called microtome or with an equipment called microtome, microtome all right. So, uh, once the tissue is uh, sliced then different biomarkers are tested right. It can be estrogen biomarker, it can be prostrogen biomarkers, it can be SMA biomarkers, right? Is uh, SMA brown? It it is HNE uh, staining. So a lot of various possibilities are there. Okay. Now if I get these slices of tissue, since these are all uniform slices, assuming do don't worry about the figure. Assuming this all these slices one, two, three, and four are uniform in terms of thickness. Right. And one more slice I get for my experiments which is I will take my piezo register and then there is a SUA tip and I will indent this on this particular tissue. I will indent my piezo resistive micro cantilever right cantilever. cantilever um, onto this tissue and this cantilever will bend, it will deform or bend depending on the tissue properties. If the tissue is hard, the bending will be less, if the tissue is soft, uh, if the tissue is hard bending will be more, if the tissue is soft bending will be less. What does, it, what does that mean? That if I have a tissue on which I am indenting my piezo resistive micro cantilever. If the tissue is hard or stiff, then my piezo resistor will bend more, right. When it touches the tissue, is not it? So, if I just bring the tissue close by, when it touches the tissue it will bend more because this particular tissue is stiffer. But if the tissue is not stiff, then my cantilever will not bend much, right. This is less stiff compared to the first case. Less stiff is more elastic, right. So, then my piezo resistor cantilever will not bend. Now, what I am saying it has a piezo resistor embedded onto the silicon wafer using this particular process flow. That means, that if I if I have the bending of the cantilever then there is a change in the resistance. Depending on how much the cantilever bends my resistance would be more or less right. So, this study would help us to understand the elasticity of the tissue right and that is why these are all the tissue slices you can see here uh, using microtome and then 
uh, we also discussed last time that the um, C stands for cancer, E stands for epithelial, B stands for benign, E stands for epithelial, C stands for cancer, S stands for stromal, B stands for benign, S stands for stromal. So, benign stromal, benign epithelial, cancer stromal, cancer epithelial from patient 1 to patient 8. When we have this such a data and if I indent my uh, this piece of register can deliver as shown in this particular figure right. Then depending on the elasticity my piece of register can deliver will bend and when it bends I can I can uh, know the resistance and convert it to a voltage depending and then from that we can understand what is the elasticity. This is a inverted microscope. Uh, there is a eyepiece and then there is a x y uh, stage we have used Nikon MP285 is a micro manipulator. So, you can indent the tissue with micron precision uh, there is a any factor and uh, if you see the piezoelectric tube uh, cantilever will look like this if you properly fabricate it if you miss a step for example uh, in this particular step process flow we have seen that there is a silicon nitride that we are using right. The silicon nitride will uh, uh, work as a counter stress when we use silicon dioxide. If I do not use silicon nitride then you can see that the cantilever is bent right. So, there is a compression in the cantilever this compression can be uh, taken care of if I use silicon nitride. In this case I deliberately have not used silicon nitride and that is why you can see that cantilever is uh, uh, having more stress because of the uh, silicon dioxide. But in this case I have used silicon nitride as well as silicon dioxide and that is why uh, um, the stress is being countered by the silicon uh, nitride alright. Now, there is a SUA tip and this this cantilever is such that this is a back side. So, this side is here in the top and the SUA is touching this tissue and this is a uh, breast uh, tissue slice and this is how the individual chips looks like right. And when we uh, uh, perform scanning electron microscopy to understand the, uh, the structure of the tissue then what we found is when we go for FESEM, FESEM stands for field electron field, field emission field emission scanning electron microscopy F E S E M all right. When we perform F E S E M of this particular slice of the tissue which is taken from the breast then we find that the normal tissues would have a much more smoother uh, surface compared to uh, the cancerous tissue, cancerous tissue would be much more coarser. So, uh, when we indent the tissue there is a change in resistance and if I just uh, uh, connect this resistor this is a piezo resistor right. So, if I just connect the resistor in a potential divider uh, circuit what will I have? If I apply 5 volts if this is the R S right sensor and this is the resistor which is a fixed resistor here when R equals to R s my output voltage V o would be 2.5 volts correct. Now, if my resistance of the piezo resistor this is R s is piezo resistor when the resistance of the piezo resistor changes depending on the elasticity of the tissue I will have a change in voltage and that is why you can see here uh, the sensor voltage changes for uh, the type of tissue here you can very clearly delineate the benign tissues which are this group of tissues compared to the cancerous tissues which are this group of tissues. So, you can see that benign epithelial has a different uh, 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 elasticity compared to the uh, cancer epithelial same way you can see that the benign stromal has a different value compared to cancer stromal here again if you compare another patient we just taken two examples so you can understand you can see that the benign would have a different value compared to the cancer uh, epithelial 
and here the benign stomal will have a different value than cancer stomal. So, the point is that when I indent this tissue, I can clearly delineate the elasticity of the tissue based on the plot and based on the data that we obtain. Uh, uh, here is just a change in sensor voltage as you keep on indenting uh, uh, or in, uh, when you go further and uh, you can understand the change in the voltage. Also, uh, these are the uh, IHC studies which is immunohistochemistry and you can see here HNE, P63 brown, SMA red, estrogen and postrogen markers. Okay. So, moving forward, uh, once we know the uh, know that piezoresistive microcantilever can help us to understand the elasticity of the tissue we want to understand the electrical property of tissue. Now, why we want to understand electrical property? Because what we found like I said that in FESCM the uh, normal tissues, normal tissues were having a different surface properties compared to the cancerous tissues or in another case the normal tissue another way uh, normal tissues are much more coarser compared to cancerous tissue or uh, sorry uh, it is opposite. Uh, the normal tissues are much more rougher compared to the cancerous tissues. Uh, this is also not a correct statement. So, <laughs> one more statement for you normal tissues are much more smooth all right smooth compared to cancerous state cancerous tissues. So, normal tissues are smooth and cancerous tissues are rough. When you see this in the FESCM, then what you understand? One is of course, smooth and rough and elasticity, but smooth and rough will also contribute to smooth and rough we are talking about the surface okay surface of normal tissue and surface of cancerous tissue so the smoothness or the roughness of the tissue will also contribute to the resistance and that's why it is interesting to study what is a change in the electrical properties of tissue as the uh, cancer progresses so now for this we have fabricated a, a micro uh, you know interdigitated electrodes and interdigitated electrodes is electrodes which are in this particular format which you can see on the screen right. These are all interdigitated electrodes and as you can see they are not touching each other right. So, I can measure my electrical property from this particular set of electrodes since they are not touching right now my z should be infinite right in ideally it should be infinite. So, if I place a tissue on this particular interdigitated electrodes then what will happen there should be change in the impedance value or resistance value. Why we are talking about impedance is that if I place the tissue I have to keep the tissue alive or uh, at least uh, keep the tissue properties intact and that is why we will create a well in which this there will be interdigitated electrodes and on that there is a tissue in which there is a saline solution or a media that will keep the tissue properties intact right media or saline. So, that the tissue will not dry up and then we are measuring impedance. Now, this media and PBS media or PBS will also contribute to the other properties that means, it will contribute to the double layer capacitance and other properties uh, it is not as straight as uh, resistance of the tissue. Now, the new term that com will come into picture would be impedance of the tissue and that is why we will measure the impedance of the tissue that if you see the paper there is a modeling in the paper in this particular paper uh, which is in sensors and actuators B. Uh, so, if I place the, and, and you can see here in this schematic the, the inter digital electrodes each are having 10 micron width this is a width and distance between two electrodes which is this one is also 10 microns 10 micron spacing 10 microns width and then on this when you place the tissue 
as you can see here, uh, this is a SU8 well, the well is made up of SU8 material. So, that you can hold the uh, saline solution or media inside the well. Now, uh, uh, this is a complete 4 inch wafer where you can see many chips. In fact, you can see uh, 30 chips, 30 chips where uh, you can perform the experiments. So, you have to perform the frequency sweep from 0 which is DC voltage to let us say 2 megahertz and you will find out the change in the impedance as well as the phase uh, uh, of uh, if I place normal tissue and then cancerous tissue. So, you can see here there is a change in the impedance and uh, for normal tissues uh, uh, compared to when you look at the cancerous tissues. Uh, we have also compared that if you have 10 micron spacing or 30 micron spacing what is the change, but what you need to focus here is that the y axis. So, if you see the y axis uh, what you will find out uh, in both the cases that is benign and cancer that the, uh, the impedance for benign is different than impedance of the cancerous tissues right you can hear very clearly see that. Uh, so, the point is can I use electrical properties uh, to delineate normal and cancer like I was using in earlier cases mechanical properties which are elasticity. So, now we can in a way we can understand that the mechanical properties which is the elasticity of the tissue and the electrical properties which are the impedance of the tissue can be used for delineating that is distinguishing the normal or benign and cancerous tissues. Okay. So, if I want to understand how can I fabricate such kind of electrodes, it is very easy you take a glass substrate then you deposit a gold film. Now, I told you earlier also whenever you want to deposit gold film you have to have the chromium as a base material because chromium will help in a better addition of gold. So, I have a chrome gold after chrome gold I can pattern this electrodes with a very simple process called photolithography. So, I have a glass I have here chrome gold let us say this is chrome gold. this is my glass on this I will spin coat photo resist right I will spin coat photo resist assuming that let us say it is a positive photo resist positive photo resist P r then next step would be soft bake right soft bake 90 degrees centigrade 1 minute hot plate followed by loading a mask followed by loading a mask. So, my mask would have this particular pattern and this will be my bright field mask
So, this is my bright filled mask. After this mask, I will expose this wafer with UV lithography or UV rays, UV rays followed by developing photoregist. Once I develop the uh, photoregist, what will I have? I will have my glass wafer with my chrome gold and photoregist left in the area which was not exposed by UV since my photoregist is a positive photoregist. So, the characteristics of the positive photoregist is that the area which is not exposed will be stronger area which is not which is not exposed will be stronger. So, this is my positive photoregist right. After this I will go for hard bake hard bake. Hard bake is done at 120 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate followed by followed by dipping this wafer in chrome gold agent. So, if I dip this wafer in chrome gold agent then what will happen? I will have my glass wafer and my chrome gold protected by the photoregist like this is not it it is very easy right steps process flow once you understand process flow it becomes very very easy to fabricate any sensor per se. Okay. So, what we have? We have positive photoregist, we have chrome gold and we have glass correct. After this I will dip this wafer in acetone. If I dip this wafer in acetone, what will happen? Acetone will strip off the photoregist and I would have this particular pattern. So, this is pattern number in C. Again, let us quickly see once again what we have discussed. We have glass wafer, then we have chrome gold. After I, uh, uh, after we have chrome gold, we have a positive photoregist spin coated on chrome gold followed by a soft bake followed by loading a mask exposing the wafer since the positive photoresist and blue bright field mask are there whatever the pattern is there on the mask will be pattern on the wafer that we already know. Another way is that what the area which is not exposed will get stronger and that is why after the performing the UV lithography if I if I develop this photoresist or after performing the UV exposure if I develop this wafer uh, develop the photoresist develop the photoregist in, the, in a photoregist developer, what will I have? I will have this particular wafer where the photoregist in the area which was not exposed by UV will get stronger and the photoregist where, the, where it was exposed by UV will get weaker followed by uh, I will put this or dip this wafer uh, in a chrome gold agent. When I dip this wafer in chrome gold agent, the chrome and gold will get etch and the photoregist will be still there which now, what I will do is I will dip this wafer in acetone, acetone is a photoregist stripper and when it strips a photoregist then what will happen? We will have this particular uh, pattern which is shown in uh, shown in C. Okay. Now, after that what we want? We want this interdigitated electrodes to be inside a SU8 well is not it? So, what we will do? is now after this I will take this wafer which is my uh, which is shown in schematic C I will take this wafer uh, 
like this. All right, and on this we will uh, we will spin code SU8. We'll spin code SU8. So if I spin code SU8. Right, this is SU8. On the interdigitated electrodes, then I will perform soft bake. Now, in case of SU8, the soft bake is done at 65 degree centigrade, and the time depends on the thickness of the SU8 material. All right. If the SU8 is thicker, the time is more. If the SU8 is thinner, the time is less. Uh, so after soft bake, I will perform exposure. An exposure that means we have a mask. We have a mask, and SU8 will act as a negative photoresist. That means the area which is not exposed will get weaker the area which is not exposed will get weaker. So, I have this area I will have this area correct. So, what I will do is I will have a mask this is my mask. And the area which is not exposed is this one. This one and this one. You're getting it. Now if I use such a mask what will happen? S weight is a negative photoresist. Okay. So, if I use mask like this and then expose the wafer, then expose the wafer followed by hard bake. In this case, after exposing, you have to go for hard bake, not like other kind of photoresist, and hard bake is done as 95 degree centigrade. Again, the time depends on the thickness of photoresist, followed by photoresist developer. That is the difference between uh, SU8 photoresist and uh, other photoresist. Then, in, in other photoresist, we go for soft bake at 90 degree followed by loading the mask, exposure, uh, developer, hard bake. But in this case, we are going for soft bake, then exposure, then hard bake, then photoresist developer. And when you develop the photoresist, uh, because the area which is not exposed, SU8 is negative photoresist, so area which is not exposed. Uh, uh, with UV light will get weaker and that is why after developing with photo, the photoresist developer the pattern will look like schematic uh, uh, number E right. Uh, the you can see here the area which was not exposed the photoresist got developed and then if you want to uh, make the material harder which is photoresist you want to make it harder you can further bake it at 125 degree centigrade for some time right uh, again depend on uh, depending on the type of the photoresist or uh, depending on the type of the thickness of the SU8 that you are using. Um, once you do that what you have is that you have uh, your interdigitated electrodes inside the SU8 well and now your chip is ready for testing uh, the electrical properties of the cancerous and the normal. Uh, tissues. Now, we are talking about breast cancer, but you can talk about any tissue related cancer in this particular case. If I load the tissue on this right, if I load with some uh, saline solution or media, I can measure the impedance of this particular tissue right across the uh, terminals. 
right. So, this is how you are measuring the or this is how you can measuring measure the electrical properties of the tissues. So, uh, since we have learned electrical properties and we have learned the mechanical properties of tissue, the next step would be to understand the electromechanical properties of the tissue. Now, we have done uh, individual mechanical properties which is the stiffness and we have also tried to understand the electrical properties which is the impedance. How about we uh, see both the parameters together that is electrical and mechanical parameters together. So, that we will see in the next module for this module just uh, uh, understand this much uh, things. In the next module what we will discuss is how can you design a, a flexible sensor that can perform both electrical and mechanical uh, studies together or phenotyping of tissues electrical and mechanical simultaneously. Right. So, till then you have any questions please ask me uh, ask uh, my teaching assistants there is a forum right um, uh, you have to solve questions by yourself you cannot not ask the solutions to the question of the assignment uh, the forum is to uh, ask doubts if you have any uh, uh, do not ask for the new ideas okay. uh, this is doubts from the, the from the topics that I am teaching you right you can free uh, you are free to ask anything uh, uh, from the from the course content uh, and next go uh, next uh, uh, module let us see uh, how can we fabricate a sensor which is flexible in nature and can also measure both the properties electrical and mechanical simultaneously till then you take care have a nice day